tax breaks to people who employ a certain number of persons in their businesses. So they will enjoy a tax break and they will enjoy recognition of government. If you employ a certain number, we've been looking at the different thresholds and we're going to fix a particular threshold depending on, depending on the availability of resources. But we have been saying if you employ as many as 15 people, if you employ as many as 20, and you are paying them a minimum wage, then you will get a tax break. We're also looking at the creation of jobs through industry. Industry ultimately, business ultimately, commerce ultimately are the ways by which jobs will be produced. But at the moment, industry is slow, business is slow, because we have a power problem. The problem of power makes it difficult for textile mills to run, it makes it difficult for even hairdressers to do their business. Tailors cannot do their business. So whatever type of business, whether it is big or small, the power problem presents a real challenge. So we intend to address the power problem. How do we want to address the power problem? Because it is, the power problem is fundamental. If you don't address power, you can't address industry. One of the ways by which we intend to address the power problem is this. We have looked already at the reforms that have been carried out so far. Privatization has taken place, especially at the level of distribution and some generation. But transmission still remains in the hands of the federal government. It's not privatized. You must privatize transmission as well. You must privatize the whole hog. If you don't privatize the entire process, then there will be one of those phases that draws back everyone. And transmission at the moment needs to be privatized. But the other thing that we need to take note of is that one of the problems with power is, of course, that, or the major problem with power is that we cannot get gas to the generating plants. So we need to build a gas infrastructure. But how long will it take to build a gas infrastructure? It could take between 15 and 20 years. That is too long to wait. So what have we decided to do? We've decided that there are two different tiers of solutions. The first is that we must decentralize power. We must decentralize generation and distribution of power. Because if you don't decentralize, we'll be waiting for our grid to be ready. We'll be waiting for our gas infrastructure to be ready to feed the generating plants. But we need to decentralize. One of the good examples we have is what is going on in Lagos State at the moment. In Lagos State at the moment, we have different power plants, small power plants, the IPPs, independent power plants, they're small. Some of them, one of them is about 10 megahertz, another about 12 megahertz. So we have about four or five now. Now these power plants are placed in strategic areas. There is one that powers many of the public buildings on the island. Another powers public buildings in Ikeja, including street lights. But they are decentralized, and we can use any mix of power, any mix of, 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 of gas, rather. They use uh, not just liquefied natural gas, they may use LPG as well, or compressed natural gas. They can use any type of natural gas, so that any type of gas, so that we're not stuck with one power source, one gas source. We're not stuck with one gas source. So those decentralized power uh, centers, if you like, ensure that we can have 20, power 24 hours in different parts of the city because we have independent power plants supplied, by, uh, supplied with gas from different sources, not just one source. The other issue with the power situation is that you also need to have a situation where all of the approvals for power come from one source. At the moment, even if you want to invest in power in Nigeria today, you might spend two years just going from one approval agency to the other. One stop. What we intend to do is to have one stop, just one place where all your approvals for power, including your gas, including all your gas, uh, your gas purchase agreements and all of that, everything in one place. If we can do that, we'll speed up the time that it takes to bring in your power investment to less than three months, and everything can be done very quickly instead of the years and years that it takes at the moment. In solving our power problems, <laughs> in, in solving our power problems, because 
as I said, power is fundamental. We have to ensure that we do something about the cost of gas. One of the reasons why there is no gas and why many still continue to flare their gas is because they say it's not worth their while. Many of the gas producers say it's not even worth our while to sell the gas because we have a cap on the price of gas. We have a cap. Now, we need to, re we need to rewrite the regulations so that those who are producing power can make some money from their power. Well, well, producing gas can make some money from their gas so that they will be incentivized to supply gas. If there is no incentive to supply gas, we will not have gas. There are so many issues around the, gas, uh, around the power problem, but as I said, we at the, uh, of the APC have looked at these issues very carefully. We intend to start work on day one. The moment we, the moment we are elected and we are there, we intend to start work on day one, and we intend to put the power problem behind us as quickly as possible. Now, that is, that is for jobs. There are so many issues that we need to look at around jobs. As I said, every policy is job-related. In agriculture, for example, we're saying that one of the reasons why nobody goes into agriculture, I'm sure many of us know of the cassava revolution, when General Obasan just said, go and plant cassava. Many people went and planted cassava, and there were many cassava farms all over the place. But no one was buying the cassava. And eventually, that cassava revolution has more or less died out. Why is that so? It is because in any other country where you want to take agriculture seriously, you must subsidize it strategically. It's not enough to provide fertilizer. You must also be able to say to the farmer, we will pay you a minimum price for your produce. And one of the ways by which the APC intends to encourage agriculture and encourage production is to say, for example, that if we're concentrating on rice, if you produce rice, the government will buy the rice. It is after the government has bought the rice that we then distribute. The government will pay a minimum price. So for what you produce, government pays. Now that will encourage people to go into farming. It will encourage people to go into, a type, into the types of crops that we are interested in or that we think can become, can, we can export. If you look at Thailand, we get a lot of our rice from Thailand now. Thailand did exactly the same thing. Thailand decided that government will pay a minimum price for whatever rice is produced. Even India has done the same thing. If you look at the type, the rice that we're buying now, especially at Christmas and at festivals, they are either Thailand rice or Indian rice. It is time for us to begin to produce Nigerian rice. And I think that the APC has the answer. We're simply going to do, we're simply going to do what other people have done. It's not rocket science. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. This is what other countries have done, and we can do the same. Now, we're, we're also looking at social security. For the first time in the history of any country in Africa, we're introducing a social security scheme. What does social security mean? It means that those who are disabled at the first phase, those who are disabled and the elderly who are poor will be given a stipend. They will be paid. Those who are disabled and poor and who are elderly and poor. Now, the reason why that is important is because our country continues to be one of the poorest countries, one of the poorest 25 countries in the world, despite our resources. We have 110 million people who are extremely poor. So we need to lift people out of poverty, and we need to deal with the vulnerable. How do we deal with the vulnerable? It is by the social security scheme, taking some people, those who cannot help themselves, out of the poverty, out of the poverty bracket first. We also intend to do what is called conditional cash transfers. Many of us know that there are over 12 million children out of school in Nigeria. And we know that our health system is in complete collapse. It's completely collapsed. Now, we intend to deal with health care. And of course, if, you look, if I reel out the statistics on health care, you, you, I'm sure many of us will realize that we're just in trouble. One of the statistics is that 55,000 women die every year from maternal-related ailments alone, just maternal-related ailments, ailments related to childbirth. 55,000 women every, every year. That comes to almost 300, almost 300 women every day. And these women are poor. The same with diarrheal diseases, diseases connected with diarrhea, over 100,000 every year. 
die of diarrheal disease, of diarrheal related diseases. Of course, we are.